Hi, I'm in Tay McCollum. Um, my topic was uh, China during the Cultural Revolution, um, so during the 60s and 70s in China. Uh, in 1966, there, uh, the leader of the Communist Party in China, um, the main political party, uh, was Mao Zedong, and he, uh, in 1966, he began the Cultural Revolution, which was pretty much a, um, excuse me, a, uh, revolution of younger generations, uh, against the older generations. Um, Mao, Mao had told people, or, uh, encouraged the masses through, uh, through propaganda that um, the country was going in a bad direction, meaning that the country was being westernized. And so uh, the Cultural Revolution started and it lasted a decade. It lasted from 1966 to 1976. And um, during that time, uh, a lot of, or most of the schools and colleges in China were shut down. Um, they were closed. And all of the students that could have been going to those schools joined um, what was called the Red Guard. And they were pretty much uh, factions or militia that got together and caused a bunch of chaos throughout the country. Um, fighting against the, the older traditions that they were trying to get rid of. Um, the older ones that Mao thought did not need to be in that country. Um, so uh, a lot of the, the artwork uh, during this period um, was heavily influenced by the propaganda that Mao had spread. Um, a lot of it uh, was meant to serve the state without criticizing the state. So it was supposed to serve the people without criticizing the state. Um, so they're unlike in the U.S. where we see art about political issues, um, in China it was art that was um, raising Mao up to this godlike position almost. Um, so I kept that in mind while creating my piece of work. Um, I also kept in mind uh, color schemes. Uh, there was a lot of red used. Red is uh, associated with communism. Um, a lot of the artwork back then um, during the 60s and 70s and even still now uh, was heavily influenced by the um, Soviet socialist realist style, which sounds a little confusing, but it was uh, that style was really influenced by um, traditional European oil painting. Um, so it was all like smooth colors, uh, smooth transitions between colors, smooth um, or uh, large contrast between dark and light. Everything was realistic. Um, and so uh, while painting my piece, uh, I was not able to get a hold of oils because one, they're really expensive, and two, I do not feel comfortable using them because they're so messy. Um, so I used acrylic paint on cardstock. And this is my piece. Um, it features Elizabeth Warren uh, standing on an American flag, and I have her wearing a red coat. Um, there is a silhouette of the United States behind her, and the background I used uh, red and blue because, one, those are the main colors in the U.S., and two, red was a really important color to that culture. Um, so I took that cultures, uh, I took the Soviet re socialist realism and 
applied it to our own country, I guess. Um, I put Elizabeth Warren here because uh, she, reading about Mao, honestly really reminded me of how she is supporting, excuse me, supporting the younger generation in America to rise up, defend themselves against older tradi traditions. Um, like gay pride was not a thing in America until recently. Um, transgenderism wasn't a thing in America until recently. Um, women's rights just took off recently. Um, other than suffrage, I mean, that was a pretty huge movement for women's rights. But, uh, I mean, there, there are a lot of movements going on right now among the younger generation that really just kind of battle all of the ways of thinking that the older generation had. And I, that's what Mao did. And that's what Elizabeth Warren is doing. And so I figured that I would put her on here. Um, I have the rather... I mean, I don't know if you can tell through the video, but uh, I have a rather plain background um, because that's what generally happened with the artwork in the Chinese culture. And I will pull up a couple of examples to show you out of one of my sources. Um, so this example here, uh, this shows I mean, there are things in the background, as you can see, but they're also focus points. Um, and obviously this looks like propaganda. Um, there's a lot of yellow, but there are flashes of red, which was really important. And this was um, Mao's, Mao Zedong's uh, little red book. It was full of um, quotations from his speeches and from his writings, and that was... Uh, printed and spread to the masses um, as propaganda and a way of saying this is right, what Mao is saying is right, go with it. Um, this is an example of uh, the Red Guard. Um, this is a painting of the Red Guard. Uh, of, it's all uh, black and red, um, and again, they're holding up uh, Mao Zedong's little red book full of quotes from his uh, speeches and writings, um, standing in a, a violent pose, uh, an open rebellious pose, um, and the, the background is, I mean, there's definitely a focal point here. Um, a lot of Chinese work also has words on it. Um, I didn't add words to mine just because I honestly didn't have time, but, uh, anyway, there it is. Um, and the last example is, um, the painting that really inspired mine a little bit. Um, this is a Red Guard soldier. This painting was painted after the Cultural Revolution. And the person that painted it uh, painted this as um, as kind of a, a memoir to his to the days of his prime. I guess that's what a lot of former Red Guard soldiers consider the Cultural Revolution was uh, the the days of their prime. So um, this is a really great example of the the Soviet style. Um, realism. Uh, there's very smooth shading here. Um, very, very just smooth and realistic, but there's also extreme contrast. Um, and then you've got the, the flower. I'm not sure what the flower stands for. I didn't get the chance to research it, but um, I, ju I just thought this piece was really gorgeous. So uh, that's that. I uh, hope you learned a little bit. Thank you for watching.